Ever wondered how a small city-state in Italy came to rule a vast empire that spanned three continents? Well, today, you're in for a treat. Our tale begins in 753 BC with the founding of Rome. According to legend, it was Romulus, one of the twin sons of Mars, the god of war, who established the city. From this mythic beginning, Rome was initially governed as a monarchy, its power resting solely in the hands of its kings. But as the years passed, the Romans grew dissatisfied. They yearned for a form of government where they could have a say, a republic. And so, in 509 BC, the Romans overthrew their last king, Tarquin the Proud, and established the Roman Republic. It was a momentous shift, a radical new experiment in governance that would come to define Rome's identity. Yet, the road to empire was not an easy one. The young republic faced many challenges, among them the Punic Wars. These brutal conflicts, stretching over more than a century, pitted Rome against the mighty Carthaginians for control of the Mediterranean. The wars were harsh and bitter, but in the end, Rome emerged victorious. With Carthage defeated, nothing could stop the Romans. Their territory expanded, reaching across the Mediterranean and into North Africa, Spain and Greece. Rome was no longer a mere city-state, it had become a vast and powerful republic. So, there you have it, the birth of an empire. Born from the ashes of a monarchy, hardened by the fires of war, and expanded through sheer grit and determination. From a small city-state, Rome had grown into a formidable republic. But the best, or worst, depending on how you see it, was yet to come. So Rome was now a republic, but how did it become an empire? Let's delve into the fascinating transformation from Rome as a republic to its rise as an empire. This seismic shift primarily revolved around the actions of two significant figures, Julius Caesar and his adopted son Augustus. Julius Caesar, a military general turned statesman, rose to power through a series of political and military maneuvers. His audacious crossing of the Rubicon River in 49 BC, defying the Roman Senate's orders, essentially marked the end of the Roman Republic. Caesar's autocratic rule, though brief, set the stage for his adoptive son Augustus to take the reins. Augustus, born Gaius Octavius, was an astute politician. He cleverly positioned himself as a restorer of the Republic, all the while subtly amassing power. He initiated a new era in Roman history in 27 BC when he became the first Roman Emperor, marking the birth of the Roman Empire. Under Augustus's rule, Rome flourished. He ushered in the Pax Romana, a period of relative peace and stability that lasted for over two centuries. During this time, Rome enjoyed a golden age of cultural and architectural achievements, as well as a booming economy. The empire expanded, and the Roman legions brought distant lands under Rome's control. The Pax Romana was not merely a time of prosperity and peace, but also a period of unprecedented social and political stability. The empire's borders were secure. The internal conflicts that had plagued the Republic were largely quelled and the Roman legal system was established across the provinces, bringing law and order to the far reaches of the empire. But as with all empires, Rome was not without its flaws. Beneath the surface of this golden age, there were undercurrents of unrest and discontent. The concentration of power in one individual, the emperor, led to a system that was susceptible to corruption and tyranny. For a moment in history, Rome was the shining beacon of civilization, but even the brightest light casts a shadow. At its peak, the Roman Empire was truly a sight to behold. But what made it so successful? The Roman Empire's success was a blend of military might, innovative infrastructure, and effective governance. Let's delve deeper into each of these. Firstly, the Roman military was a force to be reckoned with. Their disciplined legions, tactical acumen, and cutting-edge weaponry were the envy of the ancient world. They had a knack for turning enemies into allies, often incorporating defeated foes into their ranks, thus continuously expanding their influence. Then, there was the ingenious infrastructure. The Romans were master builders, constructing a vast network of roads and aqueducts that connected the empire's vast territories. These roads facilitated trade and movement, while the aqueducts brought fresh water into cities, a feat unparalleled at the time. And let's not forget their governance. The Romans developed a unique blend of monarchy, oligarchy and democracy, 
what we now refer to as a republic. This political system allowed for a balance of power and a degree of citizen participation unheard of in the ancient world. But Rome was more than just military prowess and political innovation. It was a melting pot of cultures, a hub of scientific and artistic advancements. Roman literature, philosophy and art flourished, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to shape our world today. They made strides in engineering, medicine and law, much of which forms the bedrock of our modern practices. And then there was the Pax Romana, a period of relative peace and stability that lasted for over two centuries. This allowed trade, culture and ideas to flourish across the empire, creating a sense of shared identity among its diverse citizens. But it wasn't all sunshine and roses. Even at the height of its power, Rome had its share of challenges. Political corruption, economic instability, and over-reliance on slave labor, to name a few. These issues gradually eroded the empire's foundation, leading to its eventual decline. However, even at the height of its power, the seeds of the empire's downfall were already being sown. All good things come to an end, and so did the Roman Empire. But what led to its downfall? With its grandeur and might, the Roman Empire stood as a beacon of civilization for centuries. However, the very factors that contributed to its rise would, in time, lead to its fall. Internal strife was a significant factor. The empire's vast expanse made it increasingly difficult to govern. As the empire grew, so did the number of people vying for power, leading to a cycle of civil wars, assassinations, and political instability. The empire's leadership was often in flux, with emperors being toppled and replaced at an alarming rate. Economic issues also played a crucial role in the empire's demise. The empire's wealth was largely based on conquest, when expansion halted, so did the influx of riches. Coupled with rampant corruption and overspending, this led to a severe economic crisis. Inflation skyrocketed, and the empire's currency was devalued, leading to a decline in trade and economic instability. But perhaps the most significant factor was the pressure from barbarian invasions. The empire's borders extended over thousands of miles, making them increasingly difficult to defend. As the empire weakened internally, it became a target for various barbarian tribes. The Visigoths, the Vandals, the Ostrogoths, and others repeatedly attacked the empire, chipping away at its might. In the end, the Roman Empire could not withstand the combined weight of these factors. The Western Roman Empire officially fell in the late 5th century, when the last Roman Emperor, Romulus Augustus, was overthrown by the Germanic king Odoacer. And so the Roman Empire, once mighty and invincible, crumbled into the annals of history. From the ashes of its fall, however, emerged the foundations of modern Western civilization, a testament to the enduring legacy of Rome. The Roman Empire may have fallen, but its legacy continues to shape our world. How, you may ask? Well, let's dive into it. The Roman Empire, in all its grandeur and might, left an indelible mark on the tapestry of human history and its echoes reverberate even today. Let's start with the law. Roman law, as we know, was one of the most sophisticated legal systems of the ancient world. It was based on the principle of justice and the rights of the individual, concepts that are still central to most legal systems around the world today. Our modern concepts of property rights, contracts, and even torts owe much to Roman jurisprudence. Next, language. Ever wondered why so many languages across Europe sound somewhat similar? That's because they're Romance languages, descendants of the Latin language spoken by the Romans. French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and Romanian are just a few examples. Moreover, Latin itself continues to be used in the fields of medicine, law, and religion. And how about architecture? The Romans were master architects and engineers. Their innovative use of concrete, arches, and the dome revolutionized the face of architecture. The Pantheon in Rome, with its magnificent domed roof, still stands as a testament to their architectural prowess. Modern-day architectural marvels owe a lot to these Roman innovations. Lastly, government. The Roman Republic, before it became an empire, was one of the earliest examples of a representative government. The system of checks and balances they employed influenced many later governments, including that of the United States. The idea of a senate, a consul, and even the concept of a republic find their roots in ancient Rome. 
So next time you marvel at a modern city or use a phrase like et tu brut, remember the Roman Empire. Its rise and fall remind us that nothing lasts forever, but some legacies do.